shouldn't be doing is trying to take away your rights to bargain for better wages or working conditions. What we're really talking about is uh, giving you the right to work for less money. We don't want a race to the bottom. We want a race to the top. For two very strong reasons. First of all, worker choice, the freedom to choose, and the concept of more and better jobs for our state. I think it was a good thing to sign this legislation and move forward, so I'm excited to see the outcome from that. Of the top 10 performing states in the past 20 years, nine, the top nine, were all right-to-work states. The 10th state was Washington, the state of Washington. Washington is not a right-to-work state or a freedom-to-work state, but it doesn't tax individual income, nor does it tax corporate income. And so they have been able to perform at a very high level because of giving people those freedoms. Look, this is an adjustment to reality. Uh, the fact is that, you know, in the glory days, the 40s, 50s, 60s, the UAW was able to give its workers the highest wages, benefits in the world. That was because of an anomaly, that we were the only industrial country that came out of the Second World War intact. The Europe was, a, was on its knees. Germany and Japan were rubble. So we thought that was the, the natural order of things. It wasn't. And when the other industrial countries recovered, we got world competition as we have. We ran into bankruptcies, uh, Chrysler now twice. And we see that happening in the southern states where the transplants are without the unions. They weren't the ones who went bankrupt last year in 2008 and 2009. So it really is a choice. It's a tough choice, and I, I sympathize with the unions. But the fact is that in a global economy where you have to compete on wages and other elements, other of the units of production, you can either have you know, high wages with low employment, or you can, as Obama would say, spread around the wealth. The fact is that in the right-to-work states, unemployment is 6.9 percent. We have a in graphic the, that shows the right-to-work versus non-right-to-work uh, states on unemployment. Go ahead. And in the other states, the ones that are non-right-to-work, it's 8.7. So you can choose to have fewer workers who enjoy higher inflated, unnatural, if you like, wages, uncompetitive wages, or you can have competitive wages and more people employed, more people with the dignity of a job, and less unemployment, more taxation, and more activity. I think it's the right choice, but I understand how it's a wrenching choice. I think a lot of union members on the private sector side are mad at the president. I think the graph shows that it is a simple trade-off. You can have higher inflated wages with a lot more people unemployed, or you can spread the wealth and spread the employment. And I think the argument is, there is an interesting argument on principle about the, the freedom of choice. You know, Democrats famously call themselves pro-choice. That's only about aborting a fetus. But when it comes to choosing a school, a public school for your child, they are not in favor of that. And when it comes to choosing whether you should be forced into a union or not, they are not in favor. So it's a rather problematic and I'd say unilateral claim to be pro-choice. Now, if the president uh, doesn't agree with our approach, uh, he's got an obligation to put forward a plan that can pass both chambers of the Congress. Because right now, the American people have to be scratching their heads and wondering, when is the president going to get serious? He has said that he's not wedded to every detail in this plan, uh, and that he understands that a compromise requires all sides to um, accept something short of the ideal and he's committed to doing that. What we haven't seen from Republicans to this day is a single spe specific proposal uh, on revenue. We can get things done quickly. Uh, I think it's going to be extremely difficult to get it done before Christmas, but it could be done. It's late in the game to win the argument. I think what you have to do is emerge with your trousers still on. Look, <laughs> Boehner handed over his sword. It is clear that the Republicans, with all the dissension among them, are ready to raise rates. That's probably going to happen, and that's really a Rubicon. But they have to do it only in return for something really important and real on entitlements. Raising the eligibility age for Medicare, changing the cost of living adjustment means testing. If they get nothing, they cannot accept a higher rates. If they get something from the president, which he's withholding now, I think that will give them a way to at least honorably hand over a sword, but walk out still dressed. This has been a sunset.
Fish Production.